What's up everyone, welcome to episode 5 of Game Dev. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at writing your first shader. Uh, this shader isn't really going to do much, but it does set the base work and groundwork for things to come later on, like normal mapping and such. Now, just something that you should probably know, shaders are actually written in their own language. It's very similar to JavaScript, it's called GLSL. That's pretty much all you need to know about that. Uh, but you do need to know about matrices, and if you didn't take school or any mathematical classes, I'll explain to you a bit about what matrices are right now. Essentially, a matrix is a 2D array, and it's arranged in rows and columns similar to, say, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, they make it easier for us to perform uniform arithmetic operations on sets of numbers, like adding and subtracting them. Uh, matrices can represent translations, rotations, and other geometric transformations. Uh, you can use a single 4x4 matrix to represent any number of transformations in 3D space. You start with an identity matrix, it's just a base matrix that doesn't really do anything, and then you multiply it by a matrix that represents your first transformation, then one by your second, etc, etc. And then that combined matrix represents all of the transformations all in one. Uh, we're going to be using two matrices in this. The first is going to be a perspective matrix. Now, it pretty much just sets up the perspective in which we want to view the scene, just like a camera. Uh, the default WebGL, it draws things that are very close, at the exact same size as things that are far. In 3D styles, it's known as orthographic projection. But we want things that are farther away to look smaller, so we'll set up their perspective as such in the code when we actually do that. Uh, the second thing is a model view matrix, and this just represents the current move rotation state of the objects in the vertices. So that's pretty much all you need to know there. Uh, we're going to write our first shader right here, and how we're going to do that is we're just going to define it right here, outside of this class, in the shader class, so we can access it from uh, the main class, and we're just going to call it test shader. It's equal to new shader. Now if you look at this, we have the vertex shader source and then the fragment. And if you recall, the vertex displays information about a single vertex positional data, and the fragment displays co color data and stuff like that. Uh, so how we're going to do this source right here is we'll have it in its own file later on, but for now, we're just going to use triple quotations. So what this does is allow us, it allows us to use multi-line strings without actually having to hit the plus arrow and all that crap. Uh, first things first, we need a precision in here. Now this is this variable, precision, and we're just going to use a medium P. Uh, float. Now what this does is it tells our graphics card just how much precision we actually want float variables to be, or decimal variables. So we don't really need that much, we just need medium P. Uh, if we were using specifically on desktops, we could use a high P, but we're just going to use medium P for now because we want this to work everywhere. We're going to use something called an attribute. Uh, I believe I talked about this last episode. This is a variable that's going to get set in the when we send in the shader. Uh, this will get set position of every vertex that we're going to be using. That'll be inputted into here. The second thing we're going to be using is our, our matrices here. We need to define them. So we're going to define them as uniforms. And if you recall, uniforms are are variables that can be accessed outside in our in our other classes. So and we're going to use a mat4, and we're going to call the first one. This is going to be the model view matrix. So just MV matrix. Uh, next one, we're going to need the perspective matrix. So we're going to say mat4 u p matrix. Those are all the variables we need for this. Uh, now for the main me method of the shader. All these are in void main, similar to every other language out there. Uh, and if you recall from the last episode, I said that we need to set a gl underscore position in here. So that's all we're going to do. And what we're going to do, as I said earlier, is we've got to multiply the matrices together. So we're just going to multiply the perspective matrix here. Uh, and we're going to multiply it by the model view matrix, the UMV matrix. And then we need to multiply it by the position. And since the position is only a VEC3, which I neglected to put up here because we're only going to be using XYZ, uh, we actually need to turn it into a VEC4. So we're going to say VEC4 and then A POS 1.0. And this will just append 1.0 as the fourth variable in this position, so it doesn't actually multiply anything else. So that's it for our vertex shader here, just kind of just set in that position. Now the fragment shader, again, isn't going to do much. Uh, we need to define the precision here again, and we're just going to be using medium P. And in this one, we're just going to set the void main here. We're not actually going to include any colors, we're just going to straight up set it. We'll do GL frag color, you recall from last episode. And this needs to be set to a VEC4 with the red, green, blue, and then the alpha. Okay, so this is just going to set it straight black. 1.0 for red, 1.0 for blue, 1.0 for green, and 1.0 for, for the alpha. Uh, so that's the shader, it's super simple. Uh, we'll actually be implementing this tomorrow. I think I'll, I'll release one tomorrow, because uh, this is a super short episode, just kind of outline this. 
So we'll actually implement this and set all these variables in the code tomorrow, and that'll be that. So we'll see you then.